Hello and welcome to our Metastatic Breast Cancer podcast for October, where we continue our journey through Thick Nut Hans, No Mud, No Lotus, the art of transforming suffering. And this month's focus is continuing the six mantras. And if you missed any of the other podcasts, you can find them on our YouTube channel. And the six mantras are ways to express love and compassion. Thich Nhat Han says they can be very effective in transforming suffering and producing happiness in a relationship with a loved one, a friend, or a colleague. Children can practice them too. You may start by first practicing the six mantras with yourself because you can only love and understand another when you have practiced love and understanding for yourself. A mantra is a magic formula, Thich Nhat Hanh says. Every time you pronounce a mantra, you can transform the situation right away. You don't have to wait. Learn it so you can recite it when the time is appropriate. What makes the mantra effective is your mindfulness and concentration. If you aren't mindful and concentrated when you recite the mantra, it won't work. We are all capable of being mindful and concentrated. The wonderful thing about this book is it gives us tangible ways that we can transform our suffering with ourselves internally and with others externally. This month will be focused on the third mantra and that mantra is I know you suffer and that is why I am here for you. This mantra is for you to practice when you see that the other person suffers, whoever that might be in your life, to know what is happening to the person that you love or care about. If you are there for that person, you will notice when they suffer. So this is a really important one, as so much of the time we're focused on our own suffering that we're not in tune with other people's suffering. We're not aware of the suffering of anybody else apart from ourselves. And part of our practice and cultivating compassion and mindfulness is that we are also aware of other people's suffering. Thich Nhat Hanh says the third mantra is needed when you notice that the other person suffers. And this mantra can help them suffer less right away. First, you practice breathing, sitting, or walking to restore your presence. Then you are ready to go to them and say, Hello, I know you suffer, and that is why I am here for you. This is a way that we can practice love and compassion in action. True love is made of mindfulness. Because you are mindful, you know that something isn't going well with the other person. If you're able to notice that, then you can do something to help. Hello, I know you suffer. That is why I am here for you. Before you've even had a chance to do anything, they will suffer less right away. When you suffer and people who love and care about you ignore your suffering, then you suffer even more. But if the other person is aware of your suffering and offers their presence to you during these difficult moments, you suffer less right away. It doesn't take much time to bring some relief. This is a mantra that you can use in your relationships when the other person suffers. And a really important point, again, of just not being completely focused on our own suffering and knowing that our suffering impacts others and their suffering impacts us. And so it's vital that we are able to focus on, of course, our own suffering as the first mantra taught us. But now as we get into mantra three, other people's suffering. And this is a focus on being present with strong emotions. When a painful emotion comes up, Thich Nhat Hanh invites us to stop whatever we're doing and take care of it. 
to pay attention to what is happening. The practice is simple. Lie down, put your hand on your abdomen and begin to breathe. Or you may sit on a cushion or on a chair. Stop thinking and bring your mind down to the level of the navel. When you look at a tree in a storm, if you focus your attention on the top of the tree, you'll see the leaves and branches blowing wildly in the wind and the tree will look so vulnerable, as though it could be broken at any time. But when you direct your attention down to the trunk of the th tree, there's not so much movement. You see the stability of the tree and you see that the tree is deeply rooted in the soil and can withstand the storm. When we experience a strong emotion, the mind is agitated like the top of the tree. We have to bring our mind down to the trunk, to the abdomen, and focus all our attention on the rise and fall of the abdomen. Breathing in, you notice the rising of your abdomen. Breathing out, you notice the falling of your abdomen. Breathe deeply and focus your attention only on your in-breath and out-breath. If there is anything to be aware of, it's that an emotion is only an emotion and that you are much more than one emotion. You are body, feelings, perceptions, mental formations and consciousness. The territory of your being is large. One emotion is very little. An emotion is something that comes and stays for a while and eventually goes away. If during the time of the emotion you have that insight, that insight will save you. You don't have to die just because of one emotion. We shouldn't wait until the strong emotion comes to begin learning. That, in fact, may be too late. The emotion may carry you away, but you can learn right now in this moment. Then, if the day after tomorrow you have a strong emotion, you'll have confidence that you can handle that strong emotion. And so now we're going to do the practice, the mantra for this month. So wherever you are, just come to a comfortable place of stillness. And perhaps it may be nice for you to bring a hand to the abdomen, a hand to the heart space. And let's take three deep inhales. Really feeling the abdomen rising on the inhale, moving up to the crown of the head and feeling the abdomen gently falling on the exhale. And really take this moment to connect with your body, connect with your breath, let go of any judgment, any resistance, the to-do list, and just really begin to bring the body and mind together as one through your breath. You have no cares or concerns or worries in this moment. And now I want you to repeat silently after me. I know you suffer and that is why I am here for you. So I want you to bring to mind a loved one who may be going through a difficult time right now or perhaps a loved one who just needs some attention. And I want you to repeat two more times as you visualize that person I know you suffer, and that is why I am here for you. I know you suffer, and that is why I am here for you. And this mantra is there for you to practice when you see this person in real life. 
or not, and just to acknowledge their suffering, seeing that this person that you love and care about is suffering. And if you were there for that person, they will notice this and be grateful that you have acknowledged their suffering. I know you suffer and that is why I am here for you. And now expand this awareness to sending them love, compassion, and non-judgment. And now release that. And I want to share some more words from Thich Nhat Hanh about developing understanding and compassion. Just as the well-tended compost becomes a flower garden, when we take care of and look deeply into our sorrow, it transforms into understanding and compassion. The way to understanding is first to listen to yourself because the roots of our suffering are deep and connected with the roots of the suffering of others. Usually we think that other people, such as our parents, our partner, our colleagues, our friends, are to blame for our hurt. But looking more deeply, we can see the true sources of our own suffering. And we also can see that the person who we think is out to get us is in fact a victim of their own suffering. Understanding our own hurt allows us to see and understand the suffering of others. Looking without judgment, we can understand and compassion is born. Transformation is possible. When you are upset with someone, it may seem at first that this other person has no reason to suffer. Their life may seem happy and carefree, and they may have all the things in their life that you think you want. But when you are able to look deeply enough, you will notice the suffering within them. Sitting and walking mindfully, you direct your attention to the causes underlying the other person's behavior. You see clearly that they have a lot of pain inside and don't know how to handle it. That is why they suffer so much and make the people around them suffer. What they need is help, not punishment. If you stay with the practice, the suffering of anger or jealousy in you will dissipate and the flower of compassion will be born. When there is no more blame or criticism in your eyes, when you are able to look at others with compassion, you see things very differently. You speak differently. The other person can then sense you are truly seeing and understanding them. And that already eases their pain significantly. Understanding and compassion are not for somebody else to cultivate. They can heal you and increase your happiness. A human being without understanding and compassion isn't a happy being. Without compassion and understanding, you are utterly alone and cut off. You can't relate to any other human being. And with the practice of mindfulness, the feelings that have been painful and difficult transform into something beautiful, the wondrous healing balm of understanding and compassion. I hope that you'll be able to join us for October's Metastatic Breast Cancer Mindfulness Group, where we will delve even deeper into this concept and have a practice of meditation and mindfulness that can help us with cultivating compassion for ourselves and for others. Stay safe and well.